Hi there everyone, thank you very much for joining us for today's Taster webinar. Today we have John Leary Joyce, who's the CEO of the Academy of Executive Coaching presenting to us on team coaching. John is an exceptionally experienced team coach and actually accredited with leading the first systemic team coaching program at master's level in Europe. He is very well respected within the industry and it is our absolute pleasure to have him join us today. So without further ado, over to you John. Thank you very much Ben for that very positive introduction and delighted to be here today. Without doubt, team coaching is the sexy new approach on the market. AOEC regularly run free events on individual coach training and we get about 20 to 25 bookings. We launched a team coach training open event and we got 100. Why? What is it about team coaching that's so compelling? And why have you tuned into this webinar today? What are you looking for? I hope this presentation will answer most of your question and give you something more to think about. What we do know is that after a decade of experience and research into the success of individual coaching in organizations, we're hitting up against some of its limitations. Clearly, individual coaching is great for improving individual performance. But on its own, is it really impacting collective performance? As organizations are seeking greater return on their coaching investment and looking for more effective team working, they are asking individual coaches to take on coaching the whole team. But can you, as an experienced individual coach, take it on? Or is it too hot to handle? That's the question we are addressing today in the short webinar and subsequently on the full WBEX webinar in July. You can let us know your answer at the end. So, what is team coaching anyway? Is it individual coaching with team members? Is it something all of you individual coaches will be very familiar with, whether you're doing it on your own with a collection of team members or a, a group of you, a team of coaches working with the individuals on the team? But is that team coaching? Is it uh, coaching in a group? A bit like action learning sets where the team coach is uh, individual in the group and they are relating and supporting each other. Um, or is it a group facilitation? Managing business meetings, strategy reviews, time management, making sure objectives are fulfilled, constructive debate, decision making, all of the stuff that goes into just managing the teams and how they run. Or is it team building? Much more complex, looking at the group dynamics, working on trust, openness, conflict, accountability. Or is it some form of organizational consultancy? culture change, top talent, leadership development programs. In fact, what we're advocating is systemic team coaching is all of these. To be an effective systemic team coach, you need to be able to engage at multiple levels, from the individual to the whole team within the wider organizational system. Let's now look at our model of the six levels that the systemic team coach needs to be capable of working on. Let's first look at the individual level, which again, you're familiar with as a, an individual coach, dealing with their issues, their objectives, their desires, their goals. And as a systemic team coach, this would be a natural place for you to start. Then, the interpersonal level, again, you would be familiar with working between the individual and maybe their direct reports or their boss or the sponsor of the coaching initiative. Now we get into expanding away from what generally an individual coach is fun capable of doing. You're starting to engage in multiple relationships live in the room not just talking about it through the lens of the individual. And we come back to looking at the task, the vision, purpose, objectives, goals, strategies, operations, 
all of the stuff that goes into actually what they is there to do. And of course, the team is responsible both upwards to its bosses and to its followers, the people who are responsible for carrying through the, the objectives of the team. So we're looking at stakeholder involvement a lot more than just doing the 360 process that most coaches will be familiar with. And finally, we're talking about the systemic team coach. We're looking at the wider system, the political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental issues. In our full webinar in July, I'll take you through a supervision process on these levels in relation to a personal experience of working in or with a team so that you can experience the value of addressing each of these levels. For now, I also want to introduce you to a four-box model created by my colleague Peter Hawkins and explained in his book, Leadership Team Coaching. This model builds on the six levels and you can use it as a guide for your team coaching engagement. Let's look at the first two domains, understanding what's inside the team and what's outside the team. But first, what is a team? as opposed to a group. Now, Katzenbach and Smith have done a lot of work around teams and have a, a great book called The Wisdom of Teams. And their definition, which we find uh, very useful, it's about a, a small number of people who are working together with complementary skills towards a common purpose and set of goals and holding themselves mutually accountable. Now we find this is a great work, working definition. So let's look at these first two domains again. Inside the team. Well, first of all, that very question, is it a team or is it a group? Who's deciding? You or them? Does it actually matter? Who's actually in the team? What are the boundaries around it? Sometimes this might seem obvious, but if you're looking at a board, are all of the directors, the non-exec directors, the divisional directors, are they included in the team? Or do you have to make that a defined boundary in order to make the work forward? Then you begin looking at what type of team, its role, executive, non-executive, trustee, management team, project team. And is it permanent or temporary? This is especially important if you're working with a project team that has got a, a defined life cycle. And then, of course, one of the biggest complexities with working in global organizations, is it face-to-face, -face, virtual, or which is most likely both? You're having to balance those conference calls with those face-to-face -face meetings. And then, of course, the team is interfacing with its stakeholder group, the people who it's uh, responsible to, and also the people who it's serving. And finally, of course, paying attention to the influence of the wider forces, the environmental context that we talked about earlier. So as the team coach, you're having to address all of these issues, first of all, inside the team. Okay, now look, let's look at uh, the outside the team and the questions the team coach needs to address there. So. Who actually are the stakeholders? Who are the people above who commission the work and who are the followers that our, the team needs to be serving? Who's commissioning the work? Is it the team leader? Is it the executive team that's looking to develop the team below? Who's impacted not just the people above but also the people below, the followers? and what do they both want from the team. It can be very different requirements, the, the senior team commissioning the work, uh, as opposed to the team who have been impacted or are having uh, to deliver what the team is looking for. And how does that engagement happen between the team and the stakeholders? And how is it all influenced by the wider context? Now let's look at the second 
two domains. We've got the task, which is the raison d'etre. Why is the team there? Its objectives. And of course, the other domain is the people themselves. The team is composed of individuals who are there to serve the organization and to fulfill the task. My colleague Peter Hawkins added to this definition of high performance teams uh, by adding the fact that the team needs to communicate effectively, to raise morale and be aligned, needs to engage key stakeholders, and there has to be a process of constant learning and development for all its members if it's going to become a high performing team. So the team coach has to address both the task focus and the people process. So let's look a little bit more detail about what's involved there. So the task, really the objectives and goals of the team, the outputs, what the team has to achieve. The standard vi vision, mission, purpose, strategic intent. Why is the, the team there? What's it, where is it going to? The roles and responsibilities, the power, influence to get things done, and the operational systems, the cogs that make the system work. And of course, we need to look at the people process, the interpersonal relationships within the team and with the stakeholders, the dynamics of the team, the stages of group development, some of you may be familiar with Tuckman's forming, storming, norming, performing. Key elements of addressing where the team is in its development, whether it's the beginning or at the mature stage. Then, of course, there's the authority and accountability, how we take responsibility for holding ourselves and our others to account. And of course, a key element is the style and quality of leadership. You can talk about single leadership and collective leadership. And of course, the nature of followership. Whether you, as the leader, whether the team leader can have those that follow him coming up behind and being inspired by them. So in line with Katzenbach and Smith, your job as a systemic team coach is to facilitate the focus on the delivery of the task alongside the functioning of the people process to make it happen effectively and efficiently. When we put the four domains together, we get our four C's model. If we look at the top right, we're looking at what the tasks are that are required outside of the team. This is we talk about the commissioning, how the stakeholders engage and contract with the team to deliver what must happen. If we look at the top left, we're looking at what's happening inside around the task, and we talk, call, talk about that as being clarifying, of course, what we talked about earlier, the purpose, goals, objectives, roles. Bottom left, we're looking at the people within the team, what we're calling the co-creating, the interpersonal team dynamics, what we might call the team culture. And finally, the engagement, the outside the team, the people process, the connecting and engaging with the key stakeholders. So as a model for team coaching, systemic team coaching, you need to be addressing with your team these four areas and constantly be moving around them. But in actual fact, we've got a fifth domain, the core learning. As Peter Senge might call it, the fifth discipline. This is really the essence of the team learning within the organization, then both supporting each other and creating what we might call a learning organization. Okay, so let's wind up now with a description of systemic team coaching. So what we're saying is 
sorry, systemic team coaching is a process of working with the whole team together and apart. Remember, we were talking earlier about the virtual face-to-face -face nature. And also when the team is not engaged in meeting itself, but actually is outside doing the job and needing to report back in. We're coaching them to collaborate and develop their collective leadership. If you read uh, uh, Katzenbach and Smith talk about the development, uh, the, sorry, the discipline of teams, they talk about the importance of developing collective leadership. So each person is taking responsibility for their element of the delivery of the objectives. And of course, the raison d'etre of the team is to achieve their common purpose and performance objectives as well as effectively engaging with their key stakeholder groups and ultimately to transform the wider business. So we started with the challenge that for many individual coaches, team coaching was too hot to handle. As you think about a team that you've been involved with, have you been able to work with the five domains outlined here? If you have, then we believe you're doing high-performance team coaching and you must be getting fantastic results. If not, then keep going. There's lots of exciting material out there, courses and programs available so you can learn to handle the hot challenge of coaching a team to high performance. Thank you very much. And now, back to you, Ben.